Good morning, it's Jeff and Wilma here at Budroom and uh, this morning we're doing part two of Field Trip 4. So in this video uh, I just want to show you what we, the equipment we use, the frames that we bring home and um, everything that we, we do and uh, all that sort of thing. So for, for a start, uh, I'll start off with uh, down the floor here I've got a uh, single uh, burner, a single stove. On top of that, I've got my uh, pressure cooker. It's a second-hand pressure cooker from from the uh, Lifeline. Uh, there's a hose comes out of that. Up to a steam knife. I got that for nothing off a bloke. The bloke just gave it to me oh, when I first started beekeeping. It was an old one he had laying around. The handle was broken. I've been using it ever since. And you've got a, a return line into a bucket. Now, the decapping I've got a bin here, uh, a fish bin, and um, at the bottom of that I've got a wooden frame with the centre pieces not as, uh, not as big so that the honey can flow through. And got, uh, this is a bit of that security screen, secure, stainless steel security screen, cut, cut to fit around there. And I've got a wooden frame with a nail sticking upwards and you can put the uh, frame on there and rotate it around. Now you've got a honey gate there and the, the honey drains into a bucket. Now over here I've got my two frame extractor. I bought that for $100 uh, 23 years ago when I started beekeeping. And uh, here the honey goes out of the gate into uh, a bin which has got a, a coarse strainer so that, that takes a large particles of wax and uh, it goes through and then you've got another bin with a gate and that and honey goes into a bucket there so um, a couple of tools I use um, I've got a, uh, a cake scraper fantastic very simple but very effective just for scraping honey things and uh, a blunt fishing knife that's just ideal that's what I use to scrape down the frames uh, if you've got a sharp knife it just cuts into the wood too easy and uh, plus it cuts the wires when I that's ideal uh, a wooden spoon and uh, got a fork just a nice stiff one to uh, for decapping where the uh, Steam, steam knife doesn't reach. Now I've got these here uh, for processing the wax. So as the cappings build up and a lot of the honey drains out of the cappings, uh, I just uh, scoop the cappings into these ice cream dishes, uh, chock a block and even overflowing. So I just make allowance so that when it when it heat when it warms up it just makes a level maybe half an inch below the surface. And I put that in, the, in our microwave for about 12 minutes, and that is just the right time so that you you uh, warm it all up, and the wax comes to the surface, and the honey stays at the bottom, and you get a little bit of melting of the wax, and uh, and that sort of uh, separates the wax and the honey, and that works really good, and uh, you sort of know that you. You haven't destroyed the vitamins and enzymes in the honey because the honey will still crystallise at the same length of time as the rest of the honey. So that's always good. So, so that's my ice cream dishes for doing that. Uh, now, I've covered the equipment. Uh, now, I want to talk about these frames. Now, on uh, one of my videos, I mentioned how that I... I cut the drone comb out of the frames, out of the stickies, before I return them back to the hives. And uh, what I found is that the bees will, uh, for some reason, I haven't worked that part out yet, they make that drone comb real fat with wax and, and really uh, dense with wax. And then that takes up a lot of room in the uh, frame. And uh, so then you pull out a full frame of honey and you might only have two kilos of honey instead of two and a half kilos of honey, you know, so, so this is, um, 
a frame that uh, to give you an idea of how they repair it. So can you see there's a camera spot? Pick that up. For me. Yes, the light areas across the bottom where they've made new wax, where you've cut it out because yeah. it was too thick and old. Yeah. So the, the uh, wax, the first wax that they make, then this will be all drone cone. The new stuff will be all drone cone, and the new wax they make is fairly thin. So most of that area is taken up with honey. So I wanted to show that. Uh, this another frame that's just chopper block. So uh, so what I uh, now this is another frame that I took out. Uh, it's it's definitely not chopper block. Uh, it's a frame that didn't have any uh, foundation. Uh, they they made it themselves, but they've got a lot of drone comb in there. As you can see, the difference in the size. Uh, a lot of drone comb there. So and. So the part that's not capped is basically empty. So there's no unripe honey in there. So what we what we're looking for is all the honey on the frame to be capped as much as possible. So uh, this this one I'll probably just cut the whole lot out and, and rewire it with some fresh foundation. Uh, this is another frame that's just chopper block. Um, uh, now this one is a frame, it's chocolate block as well, uh, now if, if there's a foundation, was, uh, you can see on the side there there's no wire, it was a, it was a foundation this cone, but it looks, just, uh, it looks like it's all worker cone. So what I'll do is I'll take the, uh, the honey out of it and if it doesn't fall apart, I'll just uh, put it back in the hive and let them uh, fill it up again. Now, this is another, this, this frame here uh, is a subject I want to talk about. And uh, I said on one of, my other, one of my other videos that you can't do a, a talk about beekeeping now without mentioning small hive beetle. So, this, is, this came out of a hive that didn't have a queen excluder. So, this, so they uh, rebuilt, they repaired that section there with uh, drone cone and the uh, queen laid eggs in there, uh, uh, drone eggs, well, yeah, unfertile eggs to make drones. So, it's the same on both sides. Now, what I found last year, uh, I found this out for myself, I didn't read about it in a book, but I uh, noticed in some cases where you had big areas of drone comb, what happened, is particularly if it's the same on both sides, you know, quite often it will correspond on the other side, a section where it's all eaten out, where the bees have repaired it, where the beetle have had a, a start, and uh, and sometimes you'll find in the grubs in a few of the cells as well. But the bees have been able to overwhelm the beetle. And I always had the opinion that before now that the beetle, once they get a start, that the bees can't stop them. But I've found in more than one occasion that the beetle got started, then the bees overwhelmed the, the beetle and stopped them. But how they got started is I worked it out in my head. <laughs> that the drones, when they hatch out of the cells, they just, I'm not sure how long, they just hang around the, the spot where they hatch out. And you'll, you'll find that when, if you've got a heap of drones, you'll find you, when you pull it out, there's a heap of drones just on that area where they hatched out. Now, now as you know, it, well, if, if you know or you don't know, it, drones don't do any work in the hive whatsoever. They don't defend the hive. So because the drones aren't defenders, the bee will get a chance to get under the drones and lay their eggs in amongst the, the drones that haven't hatched out. And that's how they get started. So uh, it's, in, in, it's important to get rid of any uh, massive amounts of drone comb out of your hive, I believe, because um, you, 
you uh, don't want to uh, let the, the bees...